Hi, this is Steve Seidel from SDL Tridium. In this recording, we're going to look at how Tridium can help you target content and provide a compelling, interesting user experience for visitors to your site. This can be done for two ways, for both anonymous and known users. In this first example, we'll look at how we can target content to anonymous users. In this case, we have a Google example. In Google, I'm going to search for cheap 3D TVs. The search results here, I've obviously got some main search content and some sponsored links. If a user clicks on the cheap 3D sponsored link, this is a sponsored link where Electridian, our target company here, who's going to, we're going to be taken to their landing page, has already bought these search terms, and so Google is going to pass the ID back of the search terms that are purchased, as well as the information on the cheap 3D TVs. By clicking on this link, we are taken to the 3D TV product page in Electridian, but we are not presented with a default banner. Instead, we're presented with a banner here for low-priced, high-quality 3D TVs, echoing back what the user had asked about, cheap 3D TVs. Not to make our quality look cheap, these are simply low-priced and high-quality 3D TVs with a link to what other visitors have liked, a more profitable product. The key thing here is we're able to take information that this was coming in from Google, and the keywords we purchase to drive targeted content for this user. An anonymous user is never truly anonymous. We always know where they're coming from. We know their IP address, and thus we can get GeoIP information about them. We, they may have visited the site once before, and we have a cookie. There's a number of different bits of information we have about them, including the device they're browsing from, the type of browser, if it's a full browser, or from a mobile device. We use all these to drive targeted content. Now let's take a quick look how this is managed within SDL Tridium. I've switched over here to our authoring and editing environment. And we can tell by looking at the toolbar on the top of the page. This indicates to me I'm in my sandbox, and now I'm a marketer. No longer am I a site visitor, but I'm somebody who wants to see how these targeting roles are going to work, and eventually take a look at the targeting roles. Here in the middle of the page, we can see this root banner. We're on the same 3D TV page, but this is not the cheap 3D TV ad. This is a, a banner specific to a general region. How do I know that? If I open up the, the side panel here within our tool, I can look and see this is a promotion based on 3D TVs in the US. As a marketeer, I'd like to see how the site performs based on different targeting criteria. So I have a couple of different things here in the site. I could say I'd like to know what this looks like as a user coming in from Great Britain. I'll click Save to update that. And now we can see here's the same page, but the content is targeted out to somebody coming in from Great Britain. If I look at my region properties, my 3D TV promotion for Great Britain is now shown. If I switch back to the US, we'll see our original content. Now, we also saw how an ad was triggered in something coming from Google. So if I change this to, to Google here and update it, we'll get a chance to see that same ad for low price, high quality 3D televisions. If I look at the region properties, I can see our 3D TV for the cheap chat rule, as well as the 3D TV for the US group has been fired. When we talk about rules, what do we mean? If I click on the link here to manage promotions, I can actually open up a window that exposes our rules engine. Rules are comprised of two main parts. If I click on the interested visitor rule, we can explore those. They are the trigger and the action. Once we name our promotion, or our rule here at the top, promotion name is interested visitor, if I'd like, I could click that and change that as well. I then set my trigger. In this case, an interested visitor simply defined has been on the site for over 14 minutes. So if the session length is greater than or equal to 14 minutes, I could change this to more, less, some of your standard logical operators here. Our analytics data tells us that 14 minutes is a key value. If users stuck around for this long, they're interested visitors. Maybe I want to make this rule a little more complex. I could add additional triggers here. These triggers can be based on a number of different items. Some sample ones we have here in the system are based on the contact information, maybe it's the company they're with, the age, where they're from, various information about them. It could also be anonymous information, the date, geolocation the user's coming from, where are they on the site, our user location, are they coming from a search engine. We can build very powerful rules, say what's a user doing, what have they done on the site, let's target it out to them. For now I'm going to remove this trigger, keep what we have. Now we get to the action. The action says, now that this trigger has been fired, what do we do? 
Well, in this case, we want to put a coupon for somebody. Since it's an anonymous user, it's probably the first purchase. Let's give them a first purchase coupon. Where are we going to put it? Since we're tied to the CMS, we, have a, we can choose the regions on the pages we're looking at. In this case, we have a couple of different regions on the page. Some of these have content. Some of this is simply white space. So we can manage white space that most of the time will be blank, but we can push an add area if we want to. In this case, we have the promotions area. We can show items. In this case, I only want to show one item, but if it's a, a list of items, we can show a list there as well. In this case, I'm going to show one item from the home page promotion sections of the CMS. I can see we browse right through the CMS to choose the content we want, and then it's going to be added to the page. In this case, I don't have any additional filters, but if there's multiple bits of content there, I could have additional filters as well. Then if there are multiple items being returned, I can sort a, a filter rank. In this case, it's just one item, so it's not necessary. So there you have it. It's a simple rule. I'll save my rule. Look at the different rules we have in the system. If you remember, we had the 3D TV with a cheap chat, which is ranked up higher than the 3D TV for the US or Great Britain. So depending on what those are, one of the rules fired to fill the content in that area. Now I'll close the rule here. We've been talking a lot about anonymous users. What about users of a profile? I'm going to click on the home page now. And on the home page, if we look at the main banner here, we have a nice go to the heart of the action banner. But we want to talk about what happens if somebody comes to our site, somebody's logged in. So we have a login functionality here at the top. As a marketeer, I like to see what would happen if somebody's logged in and identified themselves as a female user came to the site. I like treating themselves a number of things, including personal care products. When a user identifies a female comes to the site, we can see they're targeted with female personal care items. Similarly, by simply changing the drop down list here, make sure somebody who's interested in male personal care. And now we can see the, the triggered item for a male who's interested in personal care targeted for that user. As a marketeer or a content manager in the system, I'm able to set up these different rules as well as preview what they will look like based on all the different conditions in the site and know what my site will look at based on these different rules, ultimately with the end goal of driving higher conversions within our site. So now you've seen an example of anonymous targeting with the Google as well as profile-based targeting. Both leverage the same rules technology, but one rule is based on profile information, the other rules are based on more generic information, such as the GOIP device type, etc. These rules apply to mobile devices as well as our regular website, and they can span all the different localization or translations of your websites. This concludes the demonstration of personalizing content for visitors to your site and creating a compelling user experience. If you'd like more information, please visit stl.com. Thank you.